it's it's a dinosaur and those were the first words of Alan and those were among the first words of Alan Grant when he when he walked into Jurassic Park welcome to geek speak today we're gonna look at the we're gonna look this is part one of a video series I call the cloning and ethics of Jurassic Park where we look at whether where we look at my theories and these are theories don't actually follow them to heart and also I made these theories when I was in seventh grade these are the theories about whether about how we can bring back dinos bring dinosaurs back to life again I am not a biologist I'm not a scientist this is all stuff that I came up with when I was in seventh grade so we all know and love the film series Rats Park I have a long history of collecting its toys in fact this Stegosaurus is the last of my Jurassic Park toy fandom. Well, ever since since I was a little kid, so yeah. But we all know the story about Jurassic Park, how uh, how John Hammond, who was described as being an eccentric billionaire slash capitalist, creates an island filled of genetically engineered dinosaurs for the purpose of entertaining the public. It's been a renowned novel uh, novel with two novels and renowned film series, but one of the key things and key elements of Jurassic Park is how they brought the dinosaurs back to life. Now, if you're a Jurassic Park fan, you are familiar with the Jurassic Park formula, where essentially you get a piece of amber with a mosquito inside, drill into the mosquito until you find dino DNA, extract the dino DNA, use frog DNA to fill in the gene sequence gaps, then by implanting the embryos into an ostrich or emu egg, then you get a dinosaur. But what have I told you? But what have I told you? And most of us are kind of aware of this: that the Jurassic Park formula is wrong in multiple ways. First is obviously the frog DNA. Since dinosaurs are more related to to reptiles and birds, frog DNA would only hamper the dinosaurs' genetic code. So basically, it would give them traits that not many dinosaurs would not well wouldn't exhibit in well real life. That is actually an issue that is brought up in the Telltale game Jurassic Park the game, which is an interesting game and I always wish I had it. But however, however, a main thing that we saw in the movie is that by adding species, various frog DNA to the dinosaur genetic code and allowing them to change gender from male to female in a single gender environment. In the movie, it made females into males and thus they started breeding. And fun fact, the dinosaur species that Dr. Grant and Lex and Tim found were Velociraptor eggs. So not Gallimimus, but Velociraptors were breeding on the island, which is also based off of the novel. However, in which case, the second part of the thing I found wrong that I found wrong and with the Jurassic Park formula is the use of amber. Now, amber, which is fossilized tree sap, can be found in various parts of the globe. However, there's no guarantee that you'll find an amber containing an insect that fed off the blood of dinosaurs or other animals. That being one problem. The second would be would be the amount of time it took between the insect biting the dinosaur and landing on the sap. It could be possible that it digested the blood relatively quickly before relatively relatively quickly or in a long period of time before it got trapped in the tree in the tree sap. And the next problem, which is the general reason why we can't clone dinosaurs to begin with. Well, at least there are sources that says it now, and you'll be able to see those sources. Is that DNA is not is does not last forever. According to a few scientists, DNA can only last about 523 years. So since dinosaurs have been extinct for millions of years, it's not going to be likely that you could find dinosaur DNA. But however, again, me being in seventh grade, I did not, I was not aware of that fact at the time. So I decided to just go into it in different ways. My first way was using dino fossils or some sort of special dinosaur genetic sample and mixing it with birds and reptiles. For instance, for the mighty T-Rex, scientists did find some well-preserved soft tissues of the Tyrannosaurus rex in about, I think, 2001, 2004. In which case, I said, "What if you took special? What if you took those DNA samples, or along with other examples, included mummified skin of hadiosaurs, which are duckbill dinosaurs, 
extract the DNA and then fill it with, with animals that would fit that dinosaur's description. For a T-Rex, for example, you would take either the DNA of a chicken, ostrich, or an alligator, take those, combine it with the T-Rex DNA to fill in gene sequence gaps, and then boom, you have essentially a T-Rex. While for a Hadiosaur, you would just take the blood sample of a duckbill dinosaur and combine it with either a duck or a ge ducks or geese. I wouldn't suggest geese if you don't want your Hadiosaur dinosaur to be a ravenous, not ravenous, but a very crazed animal, then boom, you get a Hadiosaur. The other dinosaurs that was that could have been resurrected are raptors, but anyone who watches the Jurassic Park series knows that the Velociraptors have the biggest kill list out of every dinosaur in the Jurassic Park series, so do that with caution, but you would take raptor DNA and combine it with any sort of birds of prey, with that being owls, falcons, eagles, and hawks. In which case, from that formula, you would only be able to resurrect three dinosaurs. Velociraptors, T-Rex, and Hadiosaurus. So anything like the Stegosaurus, the Triceratops, and Kylosaurus, the sauropods, which are the long neck dinosaurs, would not be in our reach. Another sad thing is that, which is something that you'll notice if you watch Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park fully and closely, is that you're only going to have DNA samples from dinosaurs that live in the Cretaceous period. The reason for that is the Cretaceous period is the only part of the Mesozoic era that's closest to human to, well, essentially the modern age. So you won't be able to get any sort of genetic samples from dinosaurs that live in the Jurassic period, such as Allosaurus, Brachiosaurus, or Dilophosaurus, and you wouldn't be able to gain any dinosaur DNA from dinosaurs that live in the Jurassic period, such as the Coelophysis or the Herrerasaurus, both of which are considered to be the first dinosaurs to appear on the planet. The second option is genetically gene splicing different animal, well, animals that can be closely related to a certain groups of dinosaurs. So, again, seventh grade, one, th one thing I thought about is that if you couldn't extract a perfect DNA sample from, from the fossils, but if you could somehow get an imprint, like a little, a little roadmap of what the genetic samples, genetic structure of the dinosaurs are, maybe you can take the modern day animals that could and gene slice them together to make an equivalent. So, like I said, back to the T-Rex sort of thing, instead of just adding of adding ostrich, chicken, and alligator DNA to, to the gene sequence gaps of T-Rex, just somehow genetically combine them to get a T-Rex. In that sort of option, we might be we might be able to create more than just three different groups of di groups of dinosaurs. We might be able to, well, if you take the DNA of turtles, you could make an ankylosaurus and possibly other armored dinosaurs. But that is a long shot, but that is a long shot. In which case, oh, in which case, in terms of cloning dinosaurs, again, which is impossible, we have, in the we'll have sites and articles to, if you want to read into it, there are, I only came up with two theories at the time, and there would be a lot of precautions that would need to be taken. From my standpoint, I would only brought back the dinosaurs for scientific research rather than as John Hammond wanted to build a theme park to entertain the masses, although I would be lying if I said I didn't have such ambitions at some point. But, but there are a lot of ethical, about a scientific ethical questions to, to whether or not cloning dinosaurs should be done. This, as, Mal oh, as Ian Malcolm said in the first film, we, the people in Jurassic, that made Jurassic Park was focusing whether or not they should, that they, whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think whether or not they should. Well, we at Geek Speak, we are not that irresponsible. So join us in our next video where we talk, where we'll look at whether or not we should clone dinosaurs. Again, this is all based on the theories that I presented, but, but what if in general there was a theory that could bring back dinosaurs? That will be answered in our next question in the future, my friends.